All right, the all-important draft. Same thing as always. If you are BDS, you ban these two champions no matter what, and then you sculpt the draft after that. All right, you make this your play. It becomes as little exploitable as possible if you start with these bans, and then you go for your adaptation, uh, and you get the most out of it. But we see on the other side, again, no bans. They did pick blue for themselves. This time, Darius drops the gauntlet, saying, all right, we're going Darius here. I'm going to go counter pick in mid. We're going to mix it up. We also have Alistar Zeri, very safe scaling combination to go here. Great response to an Aphelios saying, okay, all right, you want to try to scale? I'm going to get at you. We're going to go front to back with Zeri, and we see Darius. Now, Darius is particularly strong into Jarvan and into Rel, who are trying to dive into you. Uh, we see Talia here. So might we see something like a Kassadin? Probably not. But I'd like to see uh, some level of adaptation. We, uh, Azir is off the board. Cassiopeia is off the board. Not that you would want Cass here. Uh, but you want the other Cass, maybe. Uh, we could also see some amount of... Probably not Tristana, actually. I eat my words. I was not even looking at Tristana. They end up going for Tristana. Can be very dangerous because you can stun Tristana uh, coming out. That being said, the rocks don't really stop Tristana from doing her thing because she has such a long travel time on the jump that even when you are stunned, that is during the travel time, so you don't really mind it, okay? It's not that big of a deal playing into Talia. The much bigger deal is the change where they took away some of her magic resist, gave her some armor, which will make her stronger in duels. They will try to find the Aphelios in a 1v1 later, especially after level 6 for Tristana, where you can just one-shot the Aphelios see what kind of uh, adaptations they go from there and we're gonna have to see this uh top lane battle darius played into the field saying what are you gonna do to us is your nar good enough uh darius versus nar can be very very tricky to pilot but that being said then came jarvin and jarvin's coming into your team rel's coming into your team there's going to be a stage in the game where nar is going into your team uh, and so there's going to be windows to get back. Now, I love seeing this fleet footwork from Darius. It makes you fast. It keeps you healthy. This is very important against the chip champions. All right, champions like Gnar, like Quinn, Teemo, etc. That have mobility to space out, that can keep you at distance, uh, that can poke you down. I expect that we probably have second wind revitalize on the other side as well. Uh, second wind synergizing with the revitalize revitalize synergizing with fleet footwork all of them synergizing with dorans so it's going to be very hard for nar to actually have a meaningful amount of poke here that will stop the darius from wanting to do anything then if darius ever finds the window for example if nar ever puts eon cooldown darius can flash and dub and flash and ghost in response uh, the one counterplay bit will be at level six in response to flash or ghost you can use your ultimate to just shove them back call it an ultimate call it a day and move back now you see what aphelios is doing right here he's pulling the minion wave this is going to make these minions auto onto his champions uh they start off autoing onto him and then his wave is going to go we'll see if they end up going for the push or whether or not they're just trying to hold for this freeze two different tactics they're opting for the poke the cow strategy which is fairly common the correct answer to this by the way is q flash you just get on top of them right away with Alistar and you say, all right, let's stat check. You're a Felios and I've got 48 armor and a 100 extra health than you do. Let's just go, all right? And that should be the answer. They didn't do it. Uh, would have preferred to see it. Also, it would have allowed Lethal Tempo to come online compared to Fleet Footwork, which is the poking rune. Uh, Fleet Footwork much better in the all-in. So there's a miss by BDS. Now, interesting to see here, we have a Doran shield from Nar, which I believe is just a mistake. You want that Doran's blade. You need to make sure that you're hitting for the maximum. Uh, I understand the desire for the Doran's shield makes it very hard for, for Darius to get any amount of chip damage. But that said, you should be playing this, this matchup from 100% at all times anyways, especially with fleet footwork. So ends up allowing the push. Now Darius is going to do the classic Darius play. All right, we've got the three wave crash into a deep ward on this side. Now they get good information about Jarvan. This confirms to them that Jarvan's on their side of the map. However, they're still going to go for a play because my name is Zeri. We have the jump in from Alistar. They have to call back the play though because 
that was too slow. If everything happened quickly, you'd be good, but now you have to play for the fact that Jarvin might be swooping in, which is exactly what was happening. Good job by BDS playing only in the time frame that they're strong. And now they have to be careful. And uh, based on these changes, this is actually really risky. Jarvin's on five camps versus three camps from Maokai. So if this does not turn into a good play for BDS, they will have a significant farm disadvantage here. We'll see. Jumping over the wall. Did Crowny? No, she jumped over. Okay. There he jumped over and then flashed back all to try to keep the supports alive. Not give up that first blood. Very poor beginning of the game. Alistar missing out on level one plays. The fact that Nar is, uh, I think, I, well, well, we'll talk about that on the other side. But the fact that they're not able to consolidate any amount of kills here or capture any, any deaths. Uh, the fact that they have to use flashes to get out of these situations, multiple. So we're going to have summoner advantage for PSG. And we're going to have counter pick advantage up in the top lane. But based on that push, and Adam kind of playing this to the maximum. Ooh, Nar makes the first mistake of the game here. It means that we're going to step out. Now ease on cooldown. This is very important. Now you have a 24 second timer that you're Darius and you're going to say, okay, or what are you going to do? Like I'm willing to play into you. Also has multiple stacks on the passive here. So might be able to take this fight despite being 2v1 because he's got his stacks going. Now there's no conquer here, but you just are healing up. Look at that, all that extra damage. Look how much this Darius is doing. Now, Nar has no cooldown. Again, count another 20. Might be 22. I'm going to say 22 seconds. Count off the timer again. Darius is going to be mega strong. Giga Darius even. There's a there's that emote. Get it on your wheel. Beautiful, beautifully done. Darius playing to his limits. Very interesting that normally you expect to fight against Darius that has Conqueror stacked at that point. Not just Fleet Footwork. Fleet Footwork is giving him a nice little burst of healing. Uh, plus, you're getting all those ac active stats, so you're going to get the better ratio on it. But perhaps there was a window where they could have gotten the rest of the damage in. Uh, it looked like they were afraid to go in with Darius having stacks on Gnar already. Uh, but if you can let those drop, then you can go for the rest of the play and uh, take that fight to the Darius. But now he's just going to be very, very strong. He's got that modal item that we talk about, having something that can play offense and defense. These plated steel caps, not only is it the perfect itemization into these two AD champions, it's also giving you move speed, which is going to exacerbate any weaknesses that Nar might have where he's feeling afraid of you. Not just that, this is not just any Darius, this is Adam's Darius, maybe the best Darius player in the entire world. Meaning that there's a certain amount of uh, clout that comes with this pick and this plated steel caps. They're going to be afraid of what you might be able to accomplish uh, in this situation. So they're going to make Nar weak side. They're going to make bot side strong. Early teleport, you see, being answered by Tristana. They both teleport. They're going to redraw a line of scrimmage right here. Using this can, uh, ward advantage to themselves. They end up getting the ward for themselves and bra breaking the line. Talia is going to try to separate the team, but Tristana knocks Woody right back in. Not just that, but the bomb explodes on multiple champions, which means that Aphelios is going to be low. Nuke actually could have jumped this. The fact that you proc the bomb means that the W is back off of cooldown. Could have actually gotten more, but that is a big, big win. BDS not only taking the win for themselves here, but also getting the dragon. Also... That was weak side. Darius was strong side, right? The Gnar is playing super far back into this matchup. They got the counter pick and they have walked themselves into a losing situation in top and they lose themselves. This is very, very good for BDS. Two kills onto Tristana is going to start the snowball. She also got a plate for herself. So she is way, way ahead on the scaling front. Also has, it looks like an assist. So we're talking about significant amounts of gold here to the tune of about 900 extra gold. Could have jumped on this. Perhaps didn't realize how weak everybody else was in this situation. And if they kill the Aphelios, then this is absolutely just dusted. Uh, done game if you kill Aphelios because then you turn around and come get that kill anyways. But opts for the safer play. Uh, might regret that later. Beautiful last hitting technique there from Nuke. You see Berserker Greaves plus Noon Quiver. Noon Quiver to help with the push. Berserker Greaves to help with the combo. 
Mo another modal item, right? You can play offense and defense. You can dodge more spells, but you can also get more of your combinations off. Mm. Now, despite all that going off, PSG is still even in gold. And you look at gold inventories, right? We've got starter item, um, or we'll, we'll call it like the first back item, plus uh, berserkers, plus boots, right? So they're even in mid. Despite Tristana having the extra kills, Talia also got one for themselves. So they're feeling just fine here. Jarvan versus Maokai. We see this early giant spell. I'm not a huge fan of Demonic Embrace Rush anymore onto Maokai. I, I tends to give up too much. You basically only want it in games where you're going to absolutely be winning sieges, uh, where you have someone like Azir and you're just saying, yeah, like we've got Azir. You're, ne you're never going to try to run into us because Azir's going to rip into you. Now I'm fine throwing damage. In those situations, I think Leandri's is actually better. And then you can go for tanky uh, second items or even something like Rylai's that you don't even need to get things into the pit. Although they usually don't go Rylai's because it overlaps the CC. But there is some amount of build flexibility there. I don't like seeing Demonic Embrace. It doesn't do enough. But it is the mix, right? It is the mix item where you can say, I'm going Demonic. It does deal some amount of chip damage. I'm a jungler, so as long as I stay in the river while I'm throwing these saplings all, the, all over the place, I'll basically always be full mana. Uh, that won't be an issue for them. We have seen some tier builds make it into this demonic build. Um, but now it'll be interesting whether or not we see Radiant Virtue or whether or not we see the Even Shroud. Even Shroud has been nerfed. Uh, Radiant Virtue is usually the go-to for these guys, especially since you're using such a committal spell and you want it to work when it's working. Uh, when it's go time, it's go time, right? But in this game, you're like daring them to dive into you, right? You're double AD carry with Alistar Darius. So, and, and even with Maokai, right? So triple tank and double carry. This is the sort of composition that they end up building for themselves. Whenever they're double marksmen, you tend to see triple tank or, or you know, bruiser plus tank tank. But Maokai is, you know, halfway in between. Maybe this is perfect. Maybe it is enough because this way you get to be the tank for the build uh, for the team comp while also being the chip when they're afraid to stand off into you and you're you're looking to deal damage to turrets with these two. Now, looking at the other side, Terrain, Terrain, Nar. All right, so that's a beautiful synergy that you have there. Um, also, you like to try to force people to play into a direction. Talia and Nar gets played together all the time. Jarvan is also very common. You normally see Nami in with this. Like Nami Lucian was very popular. Obviously, Lucian Nami doesn't do the same things that it used to uh, last year around this time. Is that a bug? What just happened there? Looked like he had that last hit and then it didn't explode. He must just not have gotten it. But... um. When you talk about Rel, the difference is Rel's gonna try to bundle people up. That's very good with a Jarvan ultimate, for example, but you can't necessarily force this issue, right? Is Rel the one jumping in? Is Jarvan the one jumping in? Probably you can have Peel, but then you have this standoff against double AD carry, which is gonna be very, very strong. And then you never want to actually jump in. Like Rel never wants to jump into Darius. Now, neither does even Nar, like even Jarvan, especially Jarvan maybe. Jarvan is one of the biggest ones. So they kind of walked themselves into the situation where, yeah, Nar's great laning into Darius, but how's your team comp going to function into this Darius now going into the end of this game? So will be interesting to see. We've already seen Adam's expertise in the laning phase. Uh, we saw, you know, we really wish that this had been a more aggressive pick from the Nar so that you could really take advantage of this counter pick. Uh, and you see that right now he's playing super, super afraid. Adam's clout, his reputation precedes him. Meaning that Nar played afraid. And and now he's uh, up to the tune of almost 20 CS. Are they going to go for this? They might opt. But again, rest of the team, like Darius is your big source of advantage right now. Last time they fumbled into you, they made some mistakes. You were able to get that chip damage. I like that you're like using the saplings. You're trying to put out vision, but you see how this whole area has been taken away vision wise. This whole area is dark. If you're thinking about what red team sees, they see none of this. It means it ve it's very, very uh, scary to try to make any sort of play, even blind, even with a Maokai. But look at what Nar's feeling right here. This has to 
exist in this world where you don't know. Darius is constantly trying to get behind you. That's why they're always going into this bush to get behind you. If they're behind you, then when you kite, you're kiting into more danger as opposed to kiting to the safety of your turret. Last frame, good communication there. They're trying to hold this situation for as long as possible. Uh, Darius is going to go for the crash now. Wave is stacked. I wonder if he's sitting on stride breaker money here. Probably is. 130 gold almost definitely has stride breaker. So I like the cover. The call is, by the way, that bring the Alistar, bring someone up. Hey, can someone help me right now? I need to go finish this build so I can push it in and get my item, but actually doesn't have it. That's a huge surprise to me. I wonder if it's because they missed that one minion uh, on that interaction. Not sure what I saw, but it looked like he missed one. And if that's the difference, like I don't expect it to be because then you just sell this and get the stride breaker anyways. Maybe he's just saying, hey, I'm, I'm pretty good here. Like this crash, he's not gonna be able to survive like holding this crash. I can back first, then I get control of the wave. Uh, it looks like he's just fast pushing it, and then we're going to see what he ends up doing with it now, whether or not they turn that into Harold Pryo or not. Uh, Tristana, very strong in the side lane, even has the level advantage temporarily until he just gets it back. One on one, but see this. Phase Rush, Crown. This is very easy for Tristana to be. Even the new crown that lasts longer, you can jump in, drop your E, you get your first auto attack. By the time the crown goes, by the time your bomb is going off, their crown is already uh, turned off and it's not doing enough, okay? So something that Tristana can look to take advantage of. She will be strong into this 1v1 in the side lane, also just a half item ahead. See the completed demonic embrace here going for these chip shots these situations but again like he has not been showing that is willing to go into these fights so the demonic isn't really doing anything like this damage like look you know sweet one sapperling on an eight second cooldown to deal that much damage to one champion that's not that's not important this is why we don't like this item anymore it's been nerfed enough it was the strongest item for a very long time uh, but it took enough nerfs that it brought it out of meta. All right, Darius has gotten behind the Darius. We're going to see the ghost using stride breaker first, not using the pull until they need to absolutely do it. That is a dead nar. You see how they hold the E? You don't want to use the E. You want to respond to a jump with E. Uh, ends up getting that kill with ease. And uh, is just completely taking over this top lane. Nar seemingly has no idea how to play this matchup. Um, We'll see if they get more. Has been sitting on seemingly these items forever. Probably going to tick up. Is probably waiting for Stride Breaker. Let's, let's see if they do it. 10 seconds before they shop. Let's see if they sell or move anything. This is that moment that I was talking about, by the way. You could go and turn this into something else. Like pretend you're buying Wits End and then buy it. But I like this. Waits till the respawn, buys it on respawn. Enemy team does not know that you have it. They can suspect that you have it, but they don't know you have it. And again, like we said earlier in the series, the biggest interaction that you can do is buy a fake item and then undo it and then respawn and then buy stopwatch. So anytime you're going to bring stopwatch into a fight, that's something you want to do. Literally, you just have to go into, into practice tool and practice it. Just practice recalling with, with a thousand gold and you say, all right, I'm... I'm recalled or, or like into a turret, whatever it is, something that gets you dead into the fountain you can do in practice tool. Then while you're respawning, you buy the fake item, then undo and then buy back the one that you want. Oh, that is good graphics. Thank you, production team. Love it. Also love that he plays the God King skins during gods because that's his thing, you know? This is just a wonderful narrative that if BDS were to make a run would be such an incredible thing. Now, if you guys remember when FPX won Worlds, that was Phoenix was the world song. Just saying, if Gods is the song, if BDS ever had a time, it would be when the anthem is Gods. There is a real effect to how it plays into your confidence and how people portray you too. Like you can gain more fans because they're cheering for gods, they're cheering for Phoenix, it feels like they're cheering for you. That sort of stuff does add up over the course of a tournament. It's not always just about mechanical skill. Most of these guys have a hundred out of a hundred. 
right? If we're going to grade them on skill, this is what they've got. But the question is, how well do they play as a team? How well do they strategize? How well do they handle pressure and the mental aspects of the game? Love Adam's position here. You see how he takes that position? He's daring Nar to come up and he's saying, all right, anywhere you go, I chase. And if that fight breaks out, we win. Now, pivotal to the build. We're always, always going to see this item second on Darius on these on these champions. Um, you've got speed item number one, speed item number two, speed item number three. Darius is gated by his ability to join the fight. Once you're in the fight, you're good. You have a 90% slow on your W. You've got the active slow from Stridebreaker. You can pull with a nice little knockup from the hook. Plus, you've got wonderful uh, armor pen scaling, so you're going to be strong off of this core just getting into the fight. You just need to get into the fight. That's why it's this. That's why it's this. And that's why I'm sure we've got Nimbus Cloak and Celerity from the blue page that we can't see. Uh, almost definitely has that to go with him. He's waiting for the fight to happen. Once the fight happens and commits, he's going to come in to the point where it's going to be that hammer to the anvil coming in at an angle to cut off escapes. And you say, we're a wall here. Alistar Maokai makes the wall. Adam on Darius is going to come in behind and make something happen. Now, <gasps> Q-Flash, beautiful three-man knockup. That's going to allow for the fight. You see that R is used on to Darius. Interesting. <laughs> oh, no. The worst Talia knockup of all time. Jarvan uses his ultimate Olaf style to just com uh, completely shut off the Darius while Talia uses the knock to actually pull him out of the cataclysm means that he gets into range to get the execute on the uh whatever it's called noxian judgment my goodness what an interaction that's a feels bad moment for psg and something that needs to be corrected immediately uh do not do that again i'm going to wall him off please knock him out of the wall not back into our team Yikes. That's a moment though. That's a moment. Beautiful Q flash, the pulverize from Alistar coming in. You see that interaction, right? Look at that, that wall, that chain is supposed to keep him in there for another full second. Instead, he's able to come be the pivot for his team, right? So you have two different tanks. You have Alistar Maokai. They're designed to do different things. Alistar is going to peel off of the carries. Maokai is much more willing to dive forward and kind of get in. Uh, to the team or they can they can choose which one does which in every fight depending on who's in the better situation they have very similar kits one goes forward the other one stays back so one becomes the engage and they hold position the other one becomes the one that peels you off of the carries darius gets to exist in that line in between and punishes you for trying to go any further or stops you from wanting to re-engage onto the maokai or the alistar who does jump in that is how these fights are going to function, especially now that you have Dead Man's Plate. Expect Darius to never auto-attack anything until he's in for the fight. He's also uh, not pivotal that he gets any more gold this game. You want your scaling champions to get much more of the gold, so he will exist in this avenue, trying to play for those. If you guys have been subscribed to the channel, then you know the tech that we use for these fighter off tank meta breaker picks what you can do once you get to this stage where your core is done and it's your responsibility now to be with the team uh there is an adaptation so if you guys want to get that make sure you like and subscribe and you guys will be able to stay tuned for more but for this game we see darius he's just going to always going to go push the lane that's closest to the objective all right, if Baron is up, he's going to push this side lane. Team is going to come through mid. You generate Pryo in both of those lanes. That lets you wedge in between. Kind of the shrug face, like, what are you going to do? Both of these sides are being pushed back on you. You just kind of have to lean. Look how Darius is with the team right here. Not even trying to create a flank, just holding down that, lo that line of scrimmage for the team. I wonder if they're going to go for a mid lane prio push and then go for dragon. They have significant vision for themselves. I would not give this up, but what they could do is push and then use that to get to dragon pit this way. It looks like Darius wants to stick it to the Nar, and why wouldn't he? Nar has been feeling afraid all game. We are going to see Black Cleaver into the armor stack, which is pretty nice. Uh, it is the only champion building any armor though, so the Black Cleaver can have a little bit of a redundancy here. 
in this armor shred. It does mean that you're going to get him lower, but he's going to be fast enough and he has enough control of the fight. Like, do you really feel confident putting your extra stacks into the into this guy? Um, or when you're putting yourself into range, potentially of a Maokai engage long distance or an Alistar flank or just him being here for an E-Flash. There you go. They get the Aphelios. Was that E-Flash? It looked like it was, although I'm not positive you can on Darius. Might have just been flashy. It does have a fairly quick cast to it. So end up getting the Aphelios. Now look at this. Darius not spending his attacks. He's letting Dead Man's Plate stack up. He's saying, all right, do you guys really want to come in here? If you do, I'll be right behind you. There it is. Comes up. He's holding everyone down. He uses Stride Breaker. He gets multiple stacks. Lebrov is going to use his life to appeal for the team. They're going to get away. Now, the uh, miscommunication here. Nuke is going in while the rest of the team is going back. That was an opportunity for sure for BDS to continue this fight, especially with this Ghost being available and Darius being in such a good position. They would have been correct to take that. So a, uh, a pretty big misplay means that they end up dying on two champions and they're going to give up Dragon. So they are not getting the maximum out of this. The good news for them is that it happened right after the Baron came down. So they will be respawning with more than two minutes left on the map to get what they want. Let's see if this is Q5. No, it's Flash Q. But almost instantaneous anyways. Right? You, bet, you better believe they're pressing those buttons together. Just blip, like zero, zero frames is what you want to give them for reaction. All right, Darius comes in. So let's pause for a moment. Right here. What does the rest of this fight look like? There was a little bit of chunk here. Adam is feeling a little bit bled out. Lebrov is committed. They've used multiple spells and they have one pick, right? There's no Aphelios here. Yeah, they're, they're just definitely stronger, especially tr since Tristana has not used anything. You could even look to reposition this fight over to this side uh, and take the fight from here. But you've got Crowny on, on Zeri able to take this fight. If anything comes out, they should have been able to go after. Maokai also could have come in and fronted for them. It didn't need to be Alistar getting chunked, but certainly a little bit of miscommunication there. The play was available. They didn't take the maximum, but that's all, all good. They still have a decent amount of lead for themselves. A K in the bank. Red buff going to be passed around. Look at the formation again. Darius here. Four people mid. Rav actually getting chunked. Needs to use his ultimate. The whiff on the Ophelia, and it's not a whiff, but... Uh, not dealing enough damage, and plus it's into the into the Alistar ultimate means that the, the chunk is real, and it means that they have to back off. They're going to have to try, try this again. Nothing on the map to play for either, right? Like, you're basically only playing for this structure. You've already killed these two side lane ones, so it's all about this mid lane. I wonder if we're going to see Darius come and wrap behind them. There you go. You see this position he's taking? I like this. I much prefer this to him being in the side lane. I like him being in a flanking position, basically, even if nothing else were to happen, just to make them think about his position. Put the stress on them. Make their heartbeat rise. It doesn't need to be perfect as long as it's making them play worse. That will have its effect. And that also has effect as the game continues. This is game five for a spot in Worlds. There is no more pressure than this. And not only that, but your PSG who won their first six games of play-ins. And if they lose these three, it's all going to be for nothing, right? The the weight of a nation is on them, an entire league. They're part of their career, right? Like whether or not they can go Maple, who knows how much longer Maple and Junja are going to be, uh, are going to be around. Junja has a world championship, right? He was a substitute for EDG when they won. So the pressure is super high. Every time that Darius gets into Fog of War or gets into their head, it's going to be a moment where the heart rate comes up. We'll see whether or not they can sustain it over the course of the, of the rest of this game. Now, we haven't talked as much about the formations over here. We talked about dive, anti-dive, and we talked about the um, positioning of terrain with NAR. Nice little synergy here. Nar, unfortunately, having fallen super far behind means that it's going to be much longer before he can really take, uh, get full effect into this game. This is probably going to be Chemtank 
from Darius to guarantee his position. Once he has chem Chemtank, he's not going to wait any longer. He's going to force the fights. This is probably going to be Dead Man's Plate, but it could also be Holebreaker. Holebreaker is an option for Gnar in the side lanes to just dominate that range dynamic and say, hey, like I'll just go back to the traditional way that Gnar beats Darius, which is you can't stand with me in the side lanes. And when you teleport into your fight, the Holebreaker actually has a moment. One, two, three, four. That amount of time that Holebreaker is turning off is a moment where you still have those stats. So you, you don't just get punished. You do have Holebreaker stats as you teleport in so you can find that perfect Gnar against the wall. And like we said before, Gnar can teleport to the Draven flag, the Demacian standard, and then look for his wall from that position. The teleport timer unfortunately outlasts the Cataclysm, so it has to be very, very precise if they want to create that synergy for themselves. One and a half K gold lead. Uh, the items are in inventory largely. You see three items here from Zarya's can be a problem. Two and a half from Tristana's pretty light. We finished two uh, from the jungler and supports as always are just on two items. If they ever get to a point where they can get Watchful Ward Stone for themselves, they'll be very happy. Although I haven't seen one yet, despite it being a tremendous spike in stats for only 1100 gold. usually something that they should consider especially since it gives them that access to having two control wards out in play and having three in the bank that's where the real power lies but you do have champions like the luxes of the world if you're playing lux support and you're going rabbit on so you get that extra shield strength and then fourth item just go watchful wardstone and say okay it's another mini rabbit and it's giving me other effects uh, that lets me still play like a support we're not losing out on a roll now, two dragons versus two dragons. I don't think PSG should go for this. They're still happy to let Aphelios come back. He is on three items, so he's feeling pretty good. But again, this is Zeri on even more. Uh, so that's going to be scary. Not only that, but we're going to have to deal with the Darius in this line. Uh, Darius, who is just giga huge this game. See him kind of fronting, choosing where and when to cast the spells. Jarvan not going for EQ. Waiting till they have a little bit of a window. Just going for a little trade poke trade here ends up being chunked and the failure doing significant amount of damage means they actually get it 200 years champion now how did he deal all that extra damage that seems completely random that those hits were still coming out at range uh they get the biggest kill for themselves means that they're gonna feel pressure now this is what i'm talking about that hype how many spells did they use for that they used so many now they're going for this baron they could end up throwing the entire game here Ends up with a multiple man root, but they go, Aji goes into the backside and they get away. <sighs> Exciting. This is so hype. What a great series. Zeri having red, now they, and they have Pryo for this dragon, means they should be able to get this for themselves. We did get recalls from PSG. Yeah, there we go. I love this play from uh, from Aji going for the push in the top lane, saying that's fine. You can get D three. I'm going to get your tier two and see if we can get this trade. But Zeri is already in position here. We'll see if she's able to stymie this push. It looks like she is, and it did end up becoming a dead man's plate, not a hole breaker. So Nar very much playing for the team fights, not going for any amount of split pushing. Uh, I don't think I like that. I really wish this were a hull breaker. I wish that Nar were playing for the presence in the side lane and challenge them to say, hey, I'm plated steel caps and, and hull, like none of you guys can kill me anyways. I don't need the dead man's plate for the extra effect. I don't need the slow. I don't need the proc. I feel like it's a miss on this item. Hull breaker would give them opportunities to create significant advantages for this split push. Now that said, the teleport is down. So you're going to see fighter, plus four all right this is going to be the standard advantage uh then you're going to see shallow ward here and if there's a counterplay it's going to be with a wedge into the middle talia takes that option away by putting the wall down but now are they committing would have liked to see that wall at this angle to say hey are you going to commit in front of your turret and take this fight or are you going to go and actually give us the entire inhibitor as well they end up getting it anyways with the cannon i'd prefer to see BDS actually looking for this wedge, especially with a dead man's plate Darius. You'd like to get in between their, their lines and just 
force them back by getting in between them, all right? You get five people in and you say, hey, I'm really good in this situation with Tristana and Zeri. I'm happy to play around these rocks. Aphelios cannot reposition nearly as well. Now, I want to see this damage. All right, so we see damage auto attack. Boom. All right, so that's Talia damage. Wow. So there's a couple of Talia rocks followed by the Aphelios after hitting the ridiculous range uh, on that on, on that spell. Getting the extra, it looked like the Chakrams to get in the deep hits off of the green-white combination. That is what the green-white combo can do. On Aphelios, right, they're using the stacking Chakrams. You try to get the ult stack, then you hit with long range from the Q or the ultimate, giving you the extra range to play with your extra Chakram uh, and deal that damage. But this was the original 200 years meme. How the heck is he dying <laughs> from like 1400 range away? He, he died on his own side of the river while Aphelios <laughs> was standing here. That's how far away that death happened from with basics. But anyways, here we go. The rest of the siege, PSG. Can they take it home? They're up two and a half K for themselves. Darius is going to be outscaled. Uh, we end up seeing Randwin's Omen. It looks like it's just gonna be the random Megatron cloak. This is a very common thing people will do when there's just one threat that you want to mitigate for. So that's what he's doing with this. Wouldn't have minded seeing a turbo chem tank to just get into position. Randwins is a little bit over indexing on the slows, but still gives you another slow to the kit. Uh, I don't expect that he's going to need to uh, put it, but it will. You know, this was the one guy who could kill him last time. He's not going to die to AD damage, and he's got that Megatron. Let's see. They've got the fight, the punch against the wall, but they do kill the Gnar completely one sided, and Adam's ghosting. He's going to be able to catch anybody here. There is no getting away from him. He's walking away, though, afraid of what might happen on this corridor. That's why he steps away. The prize that BDS gets for themselves is they get to fix their base. That's it. All right, they cannot take any more off of this. There is no major objective. So as far as NAR deaths go, that's about the best one you can hope for. You say, hey, like if this goes right, we can win the game for ourselves. If it goes wrong, nothing bad will really happen to us. Uh, look at the chunk damage. Darius actually surviving. This. Are you kidding me? And taking this fight. There's no way he can take this. That felt like an overplay. He's like, yeah, I can probably do this. That's the difference between fleet and conqueror, by the way. When you're used to playing... When you're used to playing with conqueror, you might think that maybe you've got the, the healing stacks to go off of that. Probably going to regret the fact that he went for that fight here. Let's see. E pull into Jarvan. Nar is going. You have a four-man pulverize from Lebrav again. It means that they're able to get that kill. And you see the big chase. I would have rather that you force that fight here, right? Like, comparing it to this spot, I don't think this was a bait, by the way. I think he truly just didn't check his box. You normally want to get against that wall. Uh, taking this fight, you've got big stacks. You've got all the extra stacks going off here as the Darius has a tremendous amount of stats, but it's not enough. Compare that to if he took it in this corridor with his entire team barreling down on them. Sure, maybe they 3v1 you here, but you've got enough stats to, to withhold this, right? You've built for tank. You can survive this easily, and if they go on you, your team would have lost. So a, a bit of a miss there by Adam. Uh, could have found that window, but it's going to come down to this. Like We're talking about 7th Dragon, Guaranteed Soul for somebody. It's Cloud Soul, which is the best one in the game for Darius. And to get these rotations, they are standing on top of the Baron. They're going to go for it right away. The waves are in a bad spot. If BDS does not win this fight, they have to commit. They have to, they have to take this fight. Not just that, they have to win this fight. Because if anything else happens, these waves are going to beat their base. Look at this. Engage. If you're PSG, you have to engage here. And the longer that this lasts, the the more structural damage the base is going to get. You see that they're already going to lose mid inhib, and they've got two supers coming into the wave. Now they've got a numbers advantage because Zeri did pull back. So this is going to be a window. They do get the Darius for themselves. Zeri is stuck guarding the base. Ends up killing the supers, which means that the inhibitor might die. It looks like she's just in time to keep it alive. That inhibitor must be so low. Lebrov inting to stay alive. My goodness. Three deaths. Five to two. Zeri's going to try to get this wave as far away as possible. You see this? How she's stepping up? 
it is worth inting for this wave to get it all the way dead, but it's Zeri, so she's not going to die. She steps up, cuts off the wave. Tristana systematically taking it away. It castrates the push so that they can no longer get any game-ending possibilities off of this 5v2. <sighs> Tremendous play under clutch, under clutch situations for BDS here. They end up bringing the wave up anyways. It's going to uh, succinct with these respawns. They're going to go for both these inhibitors, inhibitors down, and they're going to reset. They also have the Baron for 90 seconds more, which means, sorry, the Baron is still on uh, BDS, on to Zeri. Importantly, and Tristana means wherever they decide to go for these pushes, they'll be okay. They'll be able to push them out. Expect PSG to bring four or five people top probably five uh if anyone it's going to be nar but again it's this dead man's plate you can't want to ever touch the wave because the moment you attack the wave you're going to break your dead man's plate and darius might go on so it's one of those like game of chi games of chicken where first one to blink is going to lose tremendous series tremendous finish to a tremendous series Gosh, my kids are waiting at school for me. But you know, it's worth it. Thanks for joining me for this. I'm glad we saw a 40 minute banger to end this thing off. Hopefully it's not another 10 minutes though. Yikes. Should I give a quick message real quick? We gotta see this end. We gotta see this end. All right. Waves, supers barreling into mid and bot. You need to send at least one person to start creating this pressure in the top side. Now, because it's barren, they're saying, you know what? They can still push hard enough, even though it's against our supers, they can push in with the remainder of that barren buff. So they hold off, they send just Gnar to the top lane, all right? What they're going to try to get now is a slow push to stack up here, something that can build up with the supers. Now that the now that the buff is gone, it's truly going to come down to this last fight. Four items on Tristana. I believe we had four and a half on Zeri. We'll have to check that again. Uh, Darius has gotten out scaled, but he's still trying to be part of that fight. Look, I love the stopwatch build here. Nothing prevents more damage than stasis. Now Tristana is saying like, hey, I can create pressure in the side lane. Let's look at this fight. Are they going to dare coming into our st stack? This is the perfect AD carry for a 4-1 split or a 1-3-1 split. Zeri has perfect kit for getting away over walls. Nuke is able to neuter the, the push again. And there's no cost to mid lane. Now, will they pivot over? This is the correct answer. Come take your pressure. No, they're moving away from it. You do not need this dragon. They are putting it up into a coin flip. They actually could have checkmated this game. PSG going into this side with super just barreling, barreling into these lanes and the stacked wave already waiting for them. This is a miss. They could have gone for the top wave. Instead, this is going to come down to a flip for this fight. It is full build and guardian angel onto Zeri, uh, meaning that it is going to be so, so hard to find these kills in this game. Look at Alstar's position, by the way. Alstar looking for a flank on this side. The hammer and the anvil. Darius playing more front to back. We'll see if he comes around this way or whether or not he holds this angle for the team to hold. Now check this out. Lebrov stepping up into the Talia means that Talia's not here for the jump. We get the soul because they press up into this action till Alistar was actually able to flash into the wall and just jump in that way. No, not even flash. It was just a headbutt. And here we go. Even though they have soul, this is still a liability. If they had just gone, if PSG had just been willing to send at least NAR to that top lane, they would have been stuck. Uh, P BDS would have been stuck between a rock and a hard place with no good macro options available. You see how much Darius has been outscaled when his Q doesn't even one shot the caster line anymore at this stage in the game. Level 18 minions. Everybody in the game minus just a few. The supports on both teams are the only ones not 18. Holy crap, what a game. 42 minutes. Who had their pickums? This is going to count towards the pickum stage. Do we get to that 45 plus threshold? It looks like we will because these inhibitors are going to respawn here unless a very random fight breaks out. 
We'll say though, three clouds means that the rotation advantage goes to BDS. This is a cloud, this is a soul that's going to matter for their ability to create these flanks. Malka, Engage, Alistar, Darius, all it's going to matter. Oh, here we go. They step into this. We've got the control ward advantage, but nothing coming from it. All right, there's one window where they could have gone for the fight. Alistar looking for the flank. He's going to try to get behind Ophelios. Everything is about this Ophelios. Can you get him and knock him into your team? Look at Maokai trying to root people up. Aji is holding down for Waco. Where is Alistar? He's been dutifully holding this spot. <gasps> the ultimate used in the back of the line. It's completely separate from the rest of the team. Means that they get the Nar. Now they're going to chase here. You've got the Ghost. Everything's going forward. You've got the stopwatch being used. They go up forward. Look at this. They're repositioning their battle lines coming up front. This whole battle has been a, a story of Jarvan being separated from the team. And five for zero. The stopwatch keeps them alive. Zero resets. They get the win fight. And BDS wins the game of the tournament tournament so far wow look at the look of elation on adam's face <sighs> the deep breaths they've got this the koreans love adam as well they've got a whole stack of memes set up for him and uh oh my goodness i can't believe they take this down bds makes it in the hardest road possible to get into the world's draw including the play-in to the play-ins is going up nuke just feels the need <laughs> to go in into turret wow Thank <laughs> you.